Hi everybody, this is our mini lesson video for lesson 17. So uh, today's focus is we are going to draw parallelograms and learn about their attributes. Attributes is just a way to say what is a shape have to have to be considered a parallelogram. So I want to kind of revisit yesterday. So we drew some different shapes yesterday and we could call all of the shapes that we drew yesterday a quadrilateral. So I'm going to write that down. And the reason we could call all of those shapes quadrilaterals is because they had four sides. That was kind of the key thing. Quadrilaterals have four sides. And we looked at a specific type of quadrilateral yesterday. We looked at trapezoids. And so we know that trapezoids have four sides. But what's interesting about those four sides is that in order to be a trapezoid, you have to have at least one set of parallel lines. So at least one set of parallel lines. Okay, so we learned, I'm gonna draw a quick, a quick trapezoid. Like this is an example of a trapezoid. It has four sides and it has two sides that are parallel. Okay, at least one set of parallel lines. So that's an example of a trapezoid. So today I wanna to draw a trapezoid that can also be called a parallelogram. Okay, so that's our new category we're gonna to learn today. So we're going to draw a trapezoid that is also called a parallelogram. So I'm gonna start by drawing, and if you're doing this at home, you could be doing this too using a straight edge that you might have. Okay, so I'm gonna start by drawing some parallel lines. Okay, so here we go. I have drawn two parallel lines. I'm hoping that you can see them. I will take out my marker. Okay, so I've started with some parallel line lines. Now, in order to make my trapezoid into a parallelogram, I need to draw another set of parallel lines because to be considered a parallelogram, you have to have two sets of parallel lines. So I'm going to draw those. So now I have this set of parallel lines and I have this set of parallel lines. So I have now drawn a parallelogram. Parallelo, I always get confused if it's lelo or lola. Lelogram, okay, is, which I'm not gonna write that, we're gonna do. So has, two sets of parallel lines. Okay, so that's key for today's lesson is that parallelograms have two sets of parallel lines. So I wanna review a parallelogram is a trapezoid because it has at least one pair of parallel lines. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral because it has four sides, one, two, three, four. My question, and we're gonna dig into this and I'm probably asking it too soon in my lesson, but what we need to then understand is, is a trapezoid a parallelogram? 
a trapezoid will be a parallelogram if it's drawn with two sets of parallel lines. It's considered both. But this example of a trapezoid is not a parallelogram because it only has one set. And we know that a parallelogram has to have two sets, okay? So we have some really good wording here. At least, trapezoids have at least one set of parallel lines. So parallelograms are all trapezoids, but only some trapezoids can be considered parallelograms. Okay, so here we have our parallelogram drawn. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut out my parallelogram. Kind of makes me wish that I would have written my parallelogram statement up above it. worked okay and so now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to make another one so I'm going to try and line this up the best I can there we go I want to be able to see these lines I know this is going to go and stop there and then we have this line here This was this line here. Oh, I'm using a pencil. Okay, so now I have made a copy. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to label both of my parallelograms the same way. Okay, so we are labeling the angles. So the upper left-hand angle is going to be A, angle A. The upper angle on the right-hand side is angle B. I'm gonna follow in a clockwise direction. So C and D, and so I'm gonna do the same thing here. A, B, C, and D. Okay, so now I'm going to measure. My angles of my first parallelogram. Okay, so I'm going to start with a so remember, I'm going to line this up. And this angle is an obtuse angle. So I'm going to use my bottom numbers because I know that my angle needs to be larger than 90 degrees and so that's right in the middle so that's going to be 105 so angle A is 105 degrees so I'm going to measure angle B and angle B doesn't extend but I'm going to do my best to extend it looks like it would hit at about 75 angle C which I'm gonna do this this is a little trick I'm gonna do because that's gonna give me the extension of my line let's see angle C if I am looking at where my line would extend is probably right around 110 and then I'm gonna measure angle D. Let's see where this line would extend. This is going to be my acute angle. And if my line is lined up. Sorry, I'm getting my lines are getting me.
angle D is right around 75. Oops. I'm going to measure angle C one more time. Ah, not 110, 105. Okay. All right, so I have measured all my angles here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the one I cut out and I'm going to cut it into four pieces using squiggly lines like I did yesterday with our trapezoid. Okay, so if I take angle A and I take angle C and I put those on top of each other, what we should notice is that those angles match up. They are exactly the same. And if I do the same with angles B and D, we can see that those angles match up. They are exactly the same. So they're the same size. If you were drawing a parallelogram next to your partner, if we were sitting in the classroom, and if you drew different parallelograms, no matter what each of your par parallelograms looked like, if you did the same activity, your partner's angles A and C would be the same and your partner's angles B and D would be the same as well. That's kind of the key thing about parallelograms is that parallelograms are going to have um, two angles that are exactly the same size. So we have two angles that are 105 degrees and we have two angles that are 75 degrees. Okay, so that's also something interesting about a parallelogram that makes it different than a trapezoid. Okay, so now, kind of interesting, if we take, and let's see if I can do this, If we take our four angles and we put them together, then you can see that all together those angles add up to 360 degrees. So remember yesterday we talked about angles inside of a shape equaling 360 degrees. We talked about angles equaling 180 degrees. So if I take my angle A and my angle B, those can fit together to make a straight angle of 180 degrees. If I take angles C and D, those are going to do the same thing. They're going to come together and make that 180 degree angle. Okay, so when a, here's what I want us to talk about. When a trapezoid has more than one pair of parallel sides, it can be called a parallelogram. We know that trapezoids have at least two pairs of angles that add up to 180 degrees. When they have more than that, they can also be called a parallelogram. So we wanna do one more thing. I'm gonna check the time. Okay, so this first portion of the video, understanding what a parallelogram is. So again, a parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines, okay? We also just learned something about our angles. We learned that there are two sets of angles that are exactly the same. Okay, so we're gonna start, stop there. I'm going to do another video in a moment going over um, some additional information about parallelograms. All right, thanks.